So we're starting with proportional relationships. And for someone of you a little bit of vocabulary, uh, two quantities are proportional if they have what's called a constant ratio or a unit rate. So if you think back to the example in the entry task today, if I have one pizza and it was $8 and the cost stays the same per pizza, that's my unit rate. It's $8 per pizza. So if I have two, it goes up to 16, and three, it's eight times three is 24. For four pizzas, it would be four times eight, which is 32, or five pizzas would be $40, because five times eight is 40. If it's not constant, the two quantities would be then non-proportional. So in this example, the cost of the pizza stays the same no matter how many pizzas you order. A non-proportional relationship might be if you get a discount if you order more than one pizza. What's nice about these is it's related to what you guys already know about equivalent fractions. Ratios are all equivalent because they all could be broken down to 40 divided by 5 would be equal to 8 over 1. So all of these could be reduced to 8 over 1 and that means that they are equivalent ratios. One thing I want to show you guys with your calculator is that if you cross multiply these, meaning if I take this times this, by cross multiply I'm taking a denominator across the equal sign times a numerator. So 24 times 2 would be 48. And if I multiply its partners, 16 times 3, which is not necessarily a math fact you would know, so let me show you. 16 times 3 also equals 48. So that's another way to check if they are equivalent. This cross multiplication idea becomes important later when we're looking for a number that we don't know. So I'd like you to take some time to look through the examples. You can pause the video. There's an example one where we're looking at Andrew earning $18 per hour. There's our unit rate. That means in the table it's going to show up as $18 per one hour. And we're checking to see if he can mow a lawn. One lawn is $18. If he does two hours for mowing lawns, he gets $36. Is that a unit rate? Well, yes, because 36 divided by 2 would be equal to 18 over 1. Check and see if these are also true by dividing 54 by 3 and 72 by 4. Take a look at example 2. You can pause the video. I'd like you to take a look through these examples. And then go down here and let's try this out together. At the beginning of the year, Isabella had $120 in the bank. Each week, she deposits another $20. Is her account balance proportional to the number of weeks of deposits? So, week one. She had 120. Week two, she added 20 more dollars. In week three, she added another 20 dollars. Now remember, whenever we have money and we're trying to do a ratio, it really should be on top. So we're going to do 160 divided by 3, 140 divided by 2, and 120 divided by 1. We want to see if these become proportional. If I do 140 divided by 2, I get 70 over 1. That is not proportional to 120 over 1. So the answer would be no. These are not proportional because the first week and the second week do not equal each other. She started off with $120, and even though each week she's adding another 20, because of that first week, these are not going to be proportional. So we're, I'm going to do the guided practice with you first. You're going to want a calculator nearby. 
the Vista Marina rents boats for $25 per hour. In addition to the rental fees, there's a $12 charge for fuel. Use a table to determine if the number of hours you rent the boat is proportional to the total cost. This $12 an hour for fuel tells us we might have a little bit of a problem here. So if I rent the boat for one hour, it's $25 plus the 12, which is $27. Let's rewrite it over here with money over the, the time. And our total cost for one hour plus the $12 fuel fee is $27 for one hour. For two hours, it would be $50 plus the $12 fee. 50 plus 12 would be 62 over two. And for three hours, three times 25 would be 75 plus 12. And we would get 75 plus 12 would be 87 over three. Notice to check this, we're putting the money over time, and we're going to divide 27 by 1 is going to give us 27. 62 divided by 2 is going to give us 31. And those are not equal to each other. And 87 divided by 3 is 29, which is not equal to either of the others. So this is not proportional. And what is your reason? Well, that $12 for fuel that you have to charge no matter how many hours changes it. It's not a constant rate. The constant is the amount that you charge per hour, but then that $12 per hour changes this. Take a look at number two. Notice they have this set up correctly for us. We have money over the time. We always want to see money up above, and let's divide. 20 divided by one would, or 12 divided by one would be 12. 20 divided by two would be 10. 31 divided by three is going to be a decimal. And I get 10.3 repeat. Those don't look proportional because I'm not getting a nice unit rate. Let's try the second example where we've got Jane's earnings versus Matt's. 12 divided by 1 is 12. 24 divided by 2 is also 12. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So yes, we found a proportional one. Yes for Jane, because all of those can be brought down to the unit rate of 12 over 1. $12 for every hour. So I want you to take a moment and answer the essential question, what makes two quantities proportional? Think about that. I want you to rate yourself here. If you feel like this makes sense, you're going to fill in this part. You might be somewhere in the middle. If you need help, go ahead and fill out this part. And then during the work time, I would like you to just check with me as you're, as you're working. Today's work. We're starting on page 37. And we're going to continue to page 38. And I want you to work today on just problems numbers 1 through 6. 1 through 5 are on this page. And when you turn to page 38, you'll see number 6 up here has an A and B. Take your time with those. And when you finish those, you can put away your book and work on ST Math.